Hi, and welcome to the State of Map Server presentation for 2021. My name is Seth Govin, and I'm presenting this report on behalf of the Map Server Project Steering Committee. So, in this presentation, I'm going to give a quick introduction to Map Server before look at the upcoming 8.0 release, then have a look at the Map Server ecosystem and how to get involved in the Map Server community. So, for anyone who hasn't heard or used Map Server before, here's a very quick introduction. It's been around for almost 30 years and was originally created by Steve Lime, who's one of the most active contributors still today. It's got an open source MIT style license and it's a founding OSGO project. It implements the OGC standards and the 8.0 release is going to see the introduction of the OGC API features. It's known for being fast, cross-platform and mostly written in C, although there's been a move to C++ in the last couple of years. And going back to a previous presentation from Paul Ramsey, all of these points still apply. So it's an engine used for generating maps, hence the name Map Server, and it's a web technology built on CGI and fast CGI, so it can be easily added to any web server technology. It's fast, it's powerful, and importantly, there's not one single company that backs it. There's developers from lots of different organizations who are involved there are some links to some previous status reports online, and this report will also be made available online. So since the last presentation at FOSS4G in 2019, there's been some excellent news that there's been 43 new contributors to the project, and another 30,000 lines of code have been written, along with eight more years of effort. So the new, there's been new releases of all the products in the Map Server product suite. So in July of this year, the latest release of Map Server 7.6.4 came out. In June of this year, there was the first release of Tiny OWS for five years, which included lots of new features and fixes. And this release is in honor of Olivier Cortin, the original Tiny OWS developer who sadly passed away last year. There was also a release last year in February of Map Cache, and this includes a new pyramid cache structure and new options for storing tiles by dimensions. Now I'm going to talk about the Map Server 8 release. This will hopefully come in, be coming out in the next few weeks. All of the major developments in version 8 has been proposed via request for comment documents. These are brief technical proposals that are then voted on to see if they should be integrated into Map Server. They go back all the way back to 2005. Probably the most exciting of the RFCs that will be coming will be seen in the version 8 release is the OGC API support. This implements the OGC API features part one core into Map Server. OGC features can be seen as the successor to WFS, so you can access your vector data through a web API. And it uses the Nolman JSON library and Inja templating libraries for its implementation. In order to add the OGC features API to your map files, you need to add just two lines into your metadata section of the web object. First of all, you enable the web API, and then you need to point it to a directory containing HTML templates that will implement a basic HTML interface that you can use for browsing. Once these are set up, you can access any of your queryable vector data sets via a web URL in a format similar to this. So I've implemented it for the Map Server Itasca demo, and then you can access it using a URL in the root, you get a number of links describing all the capabilities on the server. So each of these can be seen either via JSON format or using the HTML templates, you can see it in an HTML format. You also get the open API documentation, formerly known as the Swagger documentation, again in JSON or in HTML. And this lists all the capabilities. Then you can also see all of the, your vector data sets by clicking on the information about feature collections. So this go, goes down a level and lists all of the layers in your map file. So these are all listed out, so it's a very handy data catalog for browsing your features. And then you can drill down further into an individual data set. Here you can see the extent of the data set, and then you get a number of other links. So you can see the collection as JSON, 
or HTML, which brings back this page, or you can see all the items, again, as GeoJSON or HTML. So here are all the lakes and rivers in the data set. The template, templates implement a, a leaflet map, so you can browse, and you also get all the attributes with paging. You can also drill down one more level by clicking on an individual feature. And this shows the actual geometry of the feature itself, along with all the attributes. Again, this is the HTML view. But if I go back here, I can get the GeoJSON view. So this is all accessible through the, through the API. As MapServer is built on top of GDAL, you can now use MapServer to implement a web API for any data set readable by GDAL, which is an incredibly powerful feature. Another major new feature of MapServer 8 is the introduction of a global config file. This makes it much easier to manage multiple map files. It provides increased security and more consistent support across operating systems. So MapServer has a number of environment variables that can currently be set either in the web server, sometimes in the map file, and in certain cases they didn't work on certain operating systems. For example, on Windows and IIS, some of these environment variables were never read correctly. This is all corrected using the config file, and all of these can now be set in one place. Here's an example of the new config file format. And as you can see, it's very similar or identical to the map file format. So you have blocks, for example, the config that finishes with an end. And within the config file itself, we have three additional blocks. We have environment variables. So again, these are any of the variables we just saw in the previous in the previous screen. So any of these can be set globally in your config file. So for example, we've got a debug level. You can set your projection library. You can also set the directory holding your HTML templates for the OGC API that we looked at earlier. And you can also limit access. So this makes it more secure so that you can't load map files from arbitrary locations on your, on your server or on your network. You can also provide map aliases so that you can access them, access them more easily rather than having a, to, path, to pass a path through a map file. So these keys can then be used within a URL. So for example, this is the key that you'd find in your config file. Finally, there's a plugin section. So this is something that's being noted in security audits that map files could be set up to load DLLs that might have been compromised. With the introduction of the config file, Rather than putting the path to a DLL in your map file, you put a key in your, in your map file and you put the path to the DLL within your config file. This means that the administrator can limit which DLLs are loaded by the map file. RFC 125 details a new keyword for the layer object, connection options, which was added in the 764 release. This allows you to pass in a set of options when you're opening GDAL or OGR data sets. For example, if you're reading GeoJSON using GDAL, you can flatten any nested attributes by passing this option. If you want more details, then you can go to the GDAL docs, which lists all the options available. RFC 126 details the porting of the map server code base to use the new PROJ6 API rather than PROJ4. This will be fully introduced in MapServer 8 and allows MapServer to work with Proj 7, 8, and 6, and any future versions. For users, there's no syntax changes, so you don't need to change your map files. All you have, might have to do is update your Proj lib settings, the environment variable, to the, to the newer versions of Proj, the Proj libraries. This can also be set in the new config file. Also to note is that EPSG codes are now recommended to benefit from more accurate coordinate transformations. So you should be using this format with the init equals EPSG and then the code, rather than the PROJ4 strings format that's been available in older map files. Along with the Map Server 8 release, there's also a release of brand new MapScript API documentation. This is now auto-generated from the Python MapScript bindings which means it can be kept up to date with the latest code base. We're going to have a quick look at it now. So all of the map script classes are now listed with a page for each of the classes, along with the functions and all of the constants available to map script. If I jump into one of these classes, we can see that all of the attributes available are listed 
along with the methods. In addition, class diagrams and examples have also been added to some key classes. One of the nice features is that you can jump between the different objects, so everything's linked, so I can jump to the hash table object. And you can also jump to keywords in the map file. So rather than repeating the documentation, links are provided so you can jump directly to the documentation for a particular keyword. These are also available for linking directly using URLs. Map Server 8 also sees a cleanup of the map file syntax. So over the years, there's been a number of keywords that have been added and are now deprecated or no longer have an effect on a map file. Removing these makes it less ambiguous of what should be and shouldn't be included and makes it easier to write parses for the map file syntax. So over 30 keywords have been removed from eight classes. And for, in some cases, things were deprecated almost 20 years ago. To help users migrate map files from um, and clean up the syntax for version 8, validation can be done using Mappyfile. There's also an online version that I'll quickly demonstrate now. Or you can install it using pip install and validate a whole suite of map files against a specific map server version. This will then give a list of any errors and keywords that you might have to clean up to get your map files working in the new version of map server. On the online parser, you can set the version that you want to test against for validation. And I'm going to select the older Tasker demo. And then when I try and format it, I get a list of all the keywords that are no longer applicable in version 8. So for example, the dump keyword in layer has no effect, so it's been removed in version 8. Max scale has been replaced by max scale denom. And transparent is now handled by output formats. So these are all documented within the RFC and will be and the docs for version 8 will also be updated. Map server 8 also sees a new output format, the inverse distance weighting output. This code was written back in 2014 but has only been fully integrated for the version 8 release. It allows you to take an input points layer, so based on vector points, to produce a raster output. You can set various processing options and then set your color ranges to produce different colors for different for different interpolated values. The background images of street lighting in County Monaghan Island, but it probably has zero scientific validity. Finally, along with all the new features in the version 8 release, there's been a number of important code base improvements, mainly provided by Evan Rowe. So there's been a lot of C++ -ifying of the code base, which allows certain memory issues and more modern programming techniques to be used. There's been hundreds, if not thousands, of compilation warning fixes, which means the builds are a lot cleaner and it's a lot easier to see any new warnings or errors when you're building Map Server. There's been the setup of the coverage scans, which allows you to check for memory leaks, along with lots of fixes of these once these were set up. And continuous integration processes for Map Server have also been improved. So now the fast CGI and the CGI applications are tested, not just the map server library itself. And the CI setup has also been migrated to Ubuntu Bionic. Now we're going to have a look at the software and projects related to map server and the different options available for installing map server. Probably the easiest way to trial map server is to get a copy of OSGO Live. This includes recent versions of both Map Server and Map Cache, and includes overviews and quick start tutorials that you can work along with to get an idea of how the software works. Also on OSGeo Live, there's GeoXt and GeoMoose. These are two front-end JavaScript frameworks that make use of Map Server as a back-end. Again, they're all set up and configured, so you can start working with them straight away. If you're looking to install Map Server on Linux, then it's an apt-get install command away thanks to the packages on Debian that are maintained by Sebastian Kauenberg. If you're on Windows, then Map Server for Windows, MS for W, is available, and a new release was available last December. These are maintained by Jeff McKenna of Gateway Geomatics, and they come bundled with their own Apache server, along with pre-configured demos and applications, including MapCache, TinyOWS, PySCSW, and lots more. 
They also include the most recent versions of MapScript for PHP 7.4 and for Python 3.9. Also available on Windows are the Windows builds from the GIS internal sites maintained by Tamash Sekeres. These are compiled versions of MapServer and GDAL for various Visual Studio releases. And also, there are Windows development kits available, so you can easily compile MapServer yourself. These development kits are used for the CI on both GDAL and MapServer, and have been recently updated to use Visual Studio 2019 and Proj7. Finally, just a quick mention of one of the newer projects related to MapServer, which is the GeoStyler map file parser. And there's a talk at this Phosphor-G, which is well worth checking out. So the GeoStyler parser will allow you to take a styling available in the map server map file and convert it into another format, such as LSD, QGIS, or open layers. And it also works the other way, so you can convert those styles into a map server map file format. Now we're going to look at how to get involved in the map server community. We've got a number of different communication channels including the mailing lists, which should split into users and developers. So users is where you could ask questions and support on MapServer. And the developers mailing list is more focused around feature development and code. We have an IRC, so a chat channel, which has recently moved to the Libera chat. We've got a Twitter account you can follow, at MapServer underscore OSGO. And also a good place to ask questions is on GIS Stack Exchange. And there are lots of questions tagged with the map server tag. We have a community gallery. So this is a collection of sites that are based around map server. And these are available on the map server wiki. So I've chosen the recent example of a disaster risk reduction knowledge service maps, which was recently submitted. So please feel free to check out some of the links, including the one in this presentation. I'd like to highlight one of the community groups which was very busy during the pandemic. So it's the Twin Cities Minnesota OSGO chapter. And they have a number of recorded talks that are available online, so linked to via their page, including one by Steve Lime on the OGC API features development, and also one by Bob Basque, who I think organizes the, the talks on Map Server and GeoMoose. Finally, in terms of community news, there's been sad news in the last couple of years with the loss of Harvard, who was heavily involved with the map server documentation, and Olivier, who was the tiny OWS developer, who both passed away in the last year. We'd like to welcome Jerome Bouet, who's the map cache development lead to the project steering committee, which is now up to 14 members. And also linked to on this slide are the service providers. So if you're looking for map server support or development, please click on that link. And then there's a link to our sponsors also. Finally, we're always looking for help on the map server project. So probably the most useful things are to provide detailed bug reports, case studies, including submissions to the community gallery we saw earlier, documentation fixes and updates. So if you notice if there's anything wrong, a submission to, to GitHub and a pull request is also always very welcome. And with the upcoming 8.0 release, to test the, the new release with your own systems and map files and report any bugs back to us. So in summary, Map Server version 8 is coming in the next few weeks. It's got lots of new features and improvements. So please download, build, test, and provide feedback on any of the beta or release candidates. There's a growing ecosystem of related projects to explore, so remember to check out the GeoStyler map file parser. And please get involved. There's plenty to be done on the project. So thanks, everyone, for your time, and I look forward to taking any of your questions. So thank you, Seth, for the presentation. Um, I'm not sure if you want to share your screen, uh, but let's, let's take some, some questions. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just to point out when I was talking about the geo styler, it was SLD it can convert to and, and not what I said. So <laughs> you can ignore that bit. That's fine. Don't worry. So first question is, uh, what would be the best way to have a nap, uh, to date map server suite on an Ubuntu Debian system? PPA or Docker or what else? 
Yeah, so I guess if you want to get kind of the, the 8 release, it, it's not being released yet, so you probably have to build it yourself. But if you're looking to get um, install the last um, full release, it's probably to use the apt get, which I think Angelos, you might be involved with as well, because you use it for OSG Live. So I think um, yeah, the commands here should get you 7.6.4, and as soon as 8's released, um, yeah, they're, they're very well maintained. So you should be able to get a bit, the version 8 quite, quite shortly after it's officially released. Yeah, uh, it, we are trying to keep up to, the, up to date with the packages <laughs> and the releases, so. Uh, there, next... is also, um, yeah, there is also a Docker, I think um, Michael Smith, who might be in, in the chat, has definitely created a Docker. Um, how up to date and things, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. So there is definitely Docker, a Docker image somewhere out there. All right, thanks. Next question is, what are the plans regarding OGC API coverages and OGC API maps? Yeah, so the at the moment for the 8 release, it's just been the OGC features API that's been implemented. So that's that was Steve Lime. So the creator map server has been implementing the whole OGC features API. Uh, at the moment for the 8 release, that's the only thing that will come out. After that, I guess it depends on on who's available to code on it and the interests, sponsorship funding for the others. Uh, in terms of development, I think the nice thing about Map Server is it's fairly modular. There's there's kind of 20 years of, of code in place. So for the, the Features API, we already had the kind of WFS. So the OGC Features API makes use of probably 90% of, of um, code that's already there with another layer on top. So for the coverages, hopefully the kind of the whole way map server works with rasters is going to be similar in that obviously there's quite a lot of work to, to add it in, but it's not kind of full rewrites and things of the, the whole application. Um, the API maps, um, I need to go and watch some other presentations to find out exactly exactly what it is. I think it's similar to the get map request. So um, yeah, as I say, in, in the main branch at the moment, it's just the features API that's going to be released in version eight, but then hopefully um, for future releases, yeah, there'll be there'll be more OGC APIs being added in to Map Server. Thank you. Uh, next question: uh, Is there an easy way to implement a known legend PNG or JPEG? Um, so I don't know if this is to make custom legends. Uh, there's definitely with the get legend requests. For WMS, you can get um, any legend that you have in your, your map files. So if you have a layer set up with lots of classes, you can definitely generate a legend um, just with um, an HTTP call. Otherwise, you can probably, I know that most of the front end frameworks request individual legends and then can stitch them together into a kind of table of contents. Then you can always resort to, to map script, which which you can do pretty much anything with. You could You can get the image and then if, if you're using Python, for example, you could use map script to generate the, the legend from map server, and then you could put it through other pipelines. So you could put it through kind of filters and image ed editors to, to pretty much create whatever whatever you need. So um, yeah, if you if you had a template, a Python template in Jinja or something, you could you could populate it using using map script or, or any of the other map script um, yeah any of the map script languages. So hopefully that that answers the question. Thank you. Uh, let's move to another question. In Map Server 8, will it be possible to use SRS codes other than those by the EPSG, uh, other codes in the prod database, for example? Um, I think Evan might be in the chat. <laughs> he might be better placed to answer it. But uh, from what I understand, with Proj, Proj 6 and above, you have the Proj DB, which is a, a SQLite database. So I'd imagine you should be able to add in records to that database if you've got your own custom projections, if they're not already in there. And then in theory, you can you can then point, you should be then point your map file to the to the custom projection. I think, uh, yeah, in Map Server, you can still use kind of the old, the older way of adding in your own projection strings, I think will still work in, from version eight, although it's, it's recommended to use um, the init equals EPSG and then the code. 
so yeah, it's probably more of a proj question. So yeah, map servers built on GDAL and, and proj and geos. So there's um, yeah, there's lots of layers <laughs> layers to map server. It's very very module modular, but you should be able to use custom projections. Uh, all right, thank you. So next question, is there support plan for vector tiles? Uh, I recall it being somewhat supported in a commit uh, way back, but it, I was unable to get it working. Um, it's definitely there. Uh, I, th I think I presented it at the, the Bucharest Phosphor-G. So again, it was, it was Steve Lime, I think um, Thomas Bonfort implemented the, the first the first pass and then it was completed by Steve Lime. So that would have been in the 7.6 release. So I've got it working on my own setup. Um, if there's issues and things, then I guess a, a question to the to the user's mailing list, unless there's a specific bug. But um, yeah, it's been there since the 7.6 release. And obviously you need still need to style the vector tiles on the client. So you're not going to get a nice image coming back. You're going to get kind of the the vector tiles Binary, binary format, but um, yeah, it's definitely in Map Server, and all the all the tests are still passing in in the continuous integration. So yeah, any questions? It's probably best to add to the the mailing list or GIS Stack Exchange. Excellent, thank you. Um, one question and uh, one more question here: Geo Server now supports internal internalization. In Get Legend Graphic, what's the status in Map Server? Okay, uh, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. I know that there's there was a lot of work on kind of I think it's I forget the C library, but there's a there's definitely um, international language support is is, is in Map Server. So things like um, writing from right to left and things, whether it's supported for Legend Graphic requests, um, I'm not 100 percent sure. But um, yeah, Map Server is set up to work with inter internationalization. So if it's not implemented, then it's probably very, very probable it could be implemented quite, quite quickly. All right, thanks. Uh, I, I got another question from the chat, which is a long one. Uh, the question is better handling of environment variables is good. Uh, would like to remove database connection info from map file to environment variable. Is it possible to set env based on environment? Uh, for example, disable deba debug log level in a, in, in a production environment. Um, yeah, at the moment, I think there's about 15 environment variables because I went through them for the, for the slide. The connection isn't an environment variable. It might be something you can replace with runtime substitution. Well, it's probably disabled for security reasons. Um, so no, at the moment there's, yeah, there's no way of, of using environment variables that I know of for connection strings. What you can do is you can, I think there's a, a utility program where you can encrypt your, if you've got a username and password in a connection string, you can encrypt it in your map file, and then it's unencrypted um, by map server. So in terms of security, you can you can encrypt um, usernames and passwords. I'm not 100 percent sure if you can encrypt the whole connection string itself. But yeah, it's it's not one of the supported environment variables at the moment. All right. Thank you very much for your answers. We are out of time. There are a couple more in the in the chat. If you if you can answer them offline, <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, I'll go back. Thanks to the chat, for the please. presentation and for being here. Great. Well, thanks everyone for listening. Thanks, Angelos, for hosting. Thank you. Thanks. So we are now moving to the next presentation, uh, which is news from Actinia by Marcus Nettler and Carmen Tawalika. Uh, I'm adding Carmen to the, to the stream. Hi, Carmen. Uh, so, a short introduction, Carmen is a passionate ge geographer. After her studies in geography, she started working in, for Mundialis, uh, using and creating OSGEO software, including an Actinia. She's an open source devotee and uh, was very happy to take part in the Phosphor G 2016 organization team for Bonn. Uh, 
Uh, Marcus is a uh, co-founder of Modialis uh, in Bonn. His main interests are Earth observation, geospatial analysis of massive amounts of data and development of free and open, uh, and open GIS, especially grass GIS. So uh, thanks for joining, Carmen. I'm going to play the video now, and then we will be back for questions.